Hi, it's Dennis Daly welcoming you to Old Time Radio on Monday, a complete Old Time Radio episode. And this week, a really classic episode of one of radio's most important shows, The Lone Ranger. For the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high yo silver, the Lone Ranger. settlers, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the new territory. The local sheriffs gave him very little help, but he did have one trusted friend, the Indian scout Tonto. Tonto was only second to the Lone Ranger in courage and daring, and the stories of his devotion and loyalty have been told and retold until the faithful Indian has become the symbol of true friendship. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young, An adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Tell us where it was on the trail ahead! I know Silver! Away! Jack's feet was familiar to quite a number of people in the early West and known especially because of his association with the Lone Ranger. Next to the Indian friend of the masked mystery rider, Cactus Pete knew him better than anyone else. As we find the wandering musician, we learn that he has joined a group of cowmen on the open range, and sure is downright entertaining to have a little music on the prairie. Gets sort of tiresome doing the same thing all the time without nothing to break the monotony. I guess so. Give us another tune on the guitar, Cactus Pete. Don't go it, boys. My fingers is plumb wore out for strumming that old guitar. Bob there's doing all right on the harmonica. Besides, <laughs> about time to turn in anyhow, ain't it? Shucks, we can always turn in. Gee, Pete. Yeah? Seems to me I've heard a plenty of stories about you in this long ring. <laughs> oh, shucks. I never done nothing except strum the guitar. You made up with the Lone Ranger frequent, ain't you? <laughs> yeah, I reckon so. You know, there's something I've always wondered about him, Pete. Well, don't ask me no questions. I don't know no more about him than you fellas do. Well, there's one thing I've always wondered about. Yeah? This Indian friend of his. Tonto? Yeah, Tonto. How'd him and the Lone Ranger meet up anyhow? Well, it's sort of a longy story. Well, come on, tell it to us, Pete. Oh, I ain't no hand to tell him stories. Do the best you can, then. <laughs> well, you see, gents, there's been a lot of stories about how the Lone Ranger and Tonto come to be friends. I don't know when it really happened. Some say it was even before the Lone Ranger found his horse, Silver. 
I know, but don't. I hear the town has saved his life one time when him and all his partners was shot up outlaws. Yeah, the town has saved his life plenty of times. And this one time, the Lone Ranger was the only one that survived the attack of the outlaws. Yep, I was down Texas way. Yeah. Uh, two of them made up before that, though. Well, tell us. Oh, <laughs> the way I heard it, it was in the mining region. Mining region, huh? Yep, uh, up around Warshaw County. There was a fellow there up with the name of Dan Slade. He had half interest in a claim with a young fellow named Bob Reed. Seems that Bob was sort of hoping the claim would pan out good for, <laughs> well, for a lot of reasons. Fact is, he was so busy hoping and working that he didn't take the time to notice what an ordinary coyote Dan Slade was. The two of them was digging, getting ready to fire a blast one hot afternoon when the sun was blistering down from a sky that hadn't showed a rain cloud for more than a month. Oh, it's sure a hot day for working, Dan. I'll be glad when we get this blasting powder ready to fire. Won't be long now. Tamp that ground down a little harder, Bob. <laughs> Maybe this'll be the time we strike the mother load, huh? Won't be long. I've seen enough to satisfy me that she's there all right. <laughs> I reckon the $50 cash you gave me for half interest will prove to be a pretty good investment, huh? Don't get the idea I was fool enough to give you 50 bucks cash money for nothing. I knew what I was buying. Sure you did. You ain't a fool. Oh, there. I guess we're ready to light the fuse now, ain't we? Yep, I'll do it. Get out of the way. All right, Dan. There. Now run. We've got a powerful big charge in there. It ought to fit something. Keep running. We can't be too far away from that blast. Let's go. I'm running. Oh, guys, Dan, wouldn't it be swell if this would be the blast that brought home the bacon? Yep, there. I guess we can watch from behind this rock. There she goes. Come on, Dan. Let's hurry back and see what happened. I just got a hunch maybe that done the trick. You and your hunches make me sick. There well, ain't no harm in hoping, Dan. That's what kept me going all this time. Hoping. Ah, uh, dry up. Dan, what's the matter with you anyway? Ain't you satisfied with the partnership? I've got to be satisfied, ain't I? Gosh. Look at the hole that blast ripped up, will you? Ain't nothing strange about it. It'd be twice as strange if a charge that size went off without making a big hole. Dan, Dan, look. Give me that shovel quick. I'll handle it. My gosh, that looks like gold, Bob. Well, hustle up. Shut up, come out. Let's have a look. I am. Don't get so excited, though. Good guy, Stan. I can't help it. What does it look like? It's a real thing, all right. Seems to me we found the big vein. Look there. Dan. Dan, we sure did. That's it. That's it. Shut up. You're acting like a fool kid. Dan, I am a fool kid. I ain't acting. Oh, gosh, Dan. If you only know what this means to Sally and the kids. New clothes, school, and a new house. Sure. Spend it all on them. What are you going to get out of it? Me? Well, I don't want nothing for myself. But, gosh, Dan. Just look at that gold. Look at it. Shut up a minute. I heard something. So did I. Seemed like someone groaning. White man, help. Dan, look. Look there. That fellow was caught in the blast. Serves him right. What's he doing around here? Here. Help me dig him out. The poor devil's half buried. You, help. He's nothing but a redskin. I'll fix no, him. No, Dan, no. Put your gun down. The dead engine is the good engine. I'll fix him so he won't need help. Dan, put that gun down. Don't shoot the poor devil. You dig here. Then come to be free. I'll dig you out. He's hurt bad, Dad. Get out of the way, Bob. We ain't saving no engine to have him scalp us someday. Just a minute. I wouldn't shoot if I were you. Say, who are you? He's got a mask on, Dan. Uh, I wasn't going to shoot the engine. I was just going to... Oh, help Tonto. Tonto? Is that your name? Dig him out. All right. That's how you feel. Here, Bob. Give me a hand. Maybe he's hurt pretty bad. We'll get him out and take him over to my shack. Well, gents, there was something about the way that mask man talked that made Dan Slade doggone willing to do what he said. Especially when he seen two big guns leveled at him. That was a Lone Ranger, huh, Pete? <laughs> that was him, all right. He'd heard the blast and left his horse a little distant and come to see what it meant. After he seen that Dan and Bob were taking care of the redskin, he went to where his horse was waiting and swung into the saddle. I'll get over he didn't know, the mask man didn't, that right then there was a scheme forming in Dan Slade's brain. Dan nursed the engine all right, took him to his shack, fixed him so the busted bone in his ankle was healing, took first rate care of him. In the meantime, the mine became the talk of the whole county. Money rolled in fast to both Bob and Dan, and Dan did his best to spend it as fast as he'd come in. Dan was in the cafe one night talking to a critter called Slim. Say, <laughs> Dan, you sure are a swell spender now, you rich. Sure thing, fellas. 
Easy come, easy go. That's my motto. Step right up, boys. The next is on me. Mindy, <laughs> head him up and give me the bill. Doggone, Dan. You sure are spending it. <laughs> Reckon I can afford it, eh? Hey there, stranger. Here's your drink. Dan Slade Street. Thanks, but I don't drink. Shuck, stranger. That's the way to get acquainted. I ain't squeamish about spending for a fellow just because he's new in town. Uh, say, Dan, how's that engine you got up to your shack? Oh, him. <laughs> I'm fixing him up to work for me. At the mine? No, nope, at the shack. It's easier to patch up an engine to do the work around there and get meals and sweep floors and such than it would be to get tied down with a wife, ain't it? <laughs> he's getting better, is he? Yep. Who is he? I don't know. He was sticking his nose around when the mine was being blasted and got broke up a bit. Says his name is Tonto. Indian? Yeah. Well, figure up, boys. Here's to Dan Slade. <laughs> Thanks, boys. I gotta be going now. If any of you need some advice on buying in on a mine, just call on Dan Slade. <laughs> All right, Dan. All right. <laughs> the funny thing, this man Slade taking care of an Indian. Well, ain't funny. Ain't like him. I'd give half a buck to know what's on his mind. He's a deep one, Dan Slade is. Yes, I can see that. He ain't taking care of a redskin for nothing. He's got a scheme working, and I'd like to know what it is. Man seems to be popular. <laughs> sure he is. Who wouldn't be? Spend the money like he does. There's a lot to what you say. Stranger, men is funny critters. They walk all over a fella trying to keep him down, and then when he gets to the top, they'll yelp their fool heads off, telling how they helped put him there. Who's Dan Slade's partner? Name is Bob Reed. Now, there's a fella that's liked by most of the fellas here. But he got a dirty deal from Slade when he needed a little cash, bad. He did? Yep. Slade made him give half interest in his mine before he gave him the cash. Bob don't complain now, though. Thinks it was right fine of Slade to do it. Yes, sir, stranger. Men sure are funny cool. Slim didn't know when he talked to the stranger in the cafe that it was the Lone Ranger, disguised and not wearing his mask. Well, the mine went along in good shape, and there was no doubt that it made both Bob and Dan a couple of the richest men in the whole county. But Dan was greedy. Half the claim wasn't enough for him. One evening, he decided to call on Bob, went to his house, and rapped on the door. Bob was kind of surprised to see Dan there. Dan! Gosh, come on in. You're sort of a stranger these days. I come on business, Bob. Charlie, come in here a minute. Well, good evening, Dan. Good evening. What business brought you here, Dan? I've been thinking. Now that the mine's going good, we ought to come to some kind of understanding. Why, sure thing. But there's nothing he'd already understood. You get half and I get half. But what if one of us dies? Then what? Oh, oh, that ain't going to happen, Dan. Yeah, you never can tell. Blasting the way we are and all that. Never can tell when you or me will get hurt some. Oh, Bob, you, you didn't tell me it was so dangerous. It ain't, Sally. There ain't no danger at all. Now, suppose you go and make up a lunch. Me and Dan will have a talk. Well, all right. Uh, just a minute. That's what you miss, Dan, not having a wife yourself. Maybe so, but I'm satisfied. Now, I brought along a paper for you to sign, Bob. Well, what kind of paper? Just an agreement between the two of us, that's all. Let me see it. Sure. Now, you see, if you die, then of course I get the mine and agree to see that so much is paid to your wife and kids regular. But if I die, you get the mine. But, Dan, it says here you agree to pay my wife only $20 a month. Well, that's more than fair, Bob. If I die, you get the whole thing. You don't have to pay out none of it. But I'm willing to help your wife out, you see. Oh, shucks, Dan. We don't need no agreement like this. Well, just the same. It's the best way. Why, I even had a lawyer over to town draw it up so it's all legal and binding. Well, all right, then. I'll sign if you want me to. It'll make me feel a heap better. I'll get a couple of witnesses to make it legal. Where can you get them? I brought them along. They're outside. I'll just call them in. Come on in, fellas. Hey, howdy, Bob. Glad to see you. Oh, howdy, Slim. Hello, Wendy. Howdy. Now, Bob, you sign right here, and I'll sign here. We both sign each copy of this, and then we each keep a copy. And there. That all? Yep, most all. Now, you two fellas sign right down here. Should be all fixed according to form. I don't feel much better this way, Bob. All right, Dan, whatever you say. You know a lot more about law and such than I do. Hey, uh, Dan? Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. There's my signature. Well, Bob, we'll be going now. And thanks. Hold on, don't be in a hurry. 
Sally's fixing up a lunch for us. Well, sorry, I'm pretty busy, Bob. Lots of work to do over at the shack. But I thought you had Tonto working over He ain't there. able to get around much. Still uses crutches to walk. You fellas ready to go? Yeah, yeah. ready. Oh, but wait a minute. My wife's fixing up. Sorry, Bob. Up. We've got to be going. Evening. Evening, Bob. Evening. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to Cactus Pete as he relates the story of the beginning of the friendship between the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Well, now, well, let's see. Bob Reed signed the paper Dan had fixed up, and a couple of witnesses made it all legal. Then Dan left before Sally got back into the room. You little supper, Bob. What? What was Dan gone to? He just left, Sally. But didn't he know I was fixing something to eat? He he wasn't mad or nothing, was he? I don't know. He just said he couldn't wait. There's something wrong with him lately, Bob. I'm beginning to think maybe there is. He's been acting awful funny. Funny? I can't figure it. Sometimes he looks like he almost hates me. Oh, but that's silly, Bob. No one hates you. Besides, aren't you the one made him rich? Yeah, but it's just the way he looks at me. Sometimes I feel mighty strange when he does it. Well, I never liked Dan Slade much myself. But he seems to be popular enough in town, so I reckon he must be all right. He spends a lot of money on the boys. That's why he's so popular, Sally. Bob, what's this paper here? Oh, that's what him and me just signed. It gives me the mine if Dan dies, and him the mine if I die. Is that the way things are done? I reckon so. Dan even brought along two fellows from town to sign his here paper with him and me. Witnesses there was. Uh, I guess Dan's a good businessman, Bob. Yeah, I'll admit I don't know much about such things. Well, anyway, Dan's getting the mine along in great shape. Running like a real business. With him there part of the time and me there part of the time. Well, I suppose Dan was all right. Look how he's taking care of that poor engine that has hurt. I can't forget, though, Sally, that at first Dan was aiming to shoot the engine. Dan wouldn't have done that. He sure would have if that Lone Ranger hadn't come along when he did and made Dan save Tonto. Gosh, I'd like to see the Lone Ranger sometime, Bob. You never seen him after that day, did you? Nope, never did. Fact is, I didn't know it was a Lone Ranger then. Wasn't until after he rode away and I heard him call his horse Silver that I realized who it was. It's mighty curious how Dan Slade's nature changed after being talked to by that mad man. It sure is, Sally. I've been puzzling it over ever since. Slim and Wendy went with Dan after he left Bob Reed's. And Slim was mighty curious about the paper he'd signed. The two of them was in the saddle, moving slow, when Slim brought the matter up. Listen, Dan, what was that paper we put our names to back at Bob Reed? It wasn't nothing, Slim, just a law form, that's all. But you said that Wendy here and me was was witnesses. Sure, that's in case sometime if I should die and some relation of mine would try to claim the mine. Well, that is my half of it. Well, Bob could say it was his, and you fellas could swear you see me sign the paper, see? Shucks, Dan. I can swear without that. <laughs> Gosh, if he buys me all I want to drink for signing that paper, it'll be the cheapest jag I ever got. <laughs> hey, Wendy? Ain't that so? Hold up there a minute! Hey, what's this? A man on a white horse. I want to talk to you, man. I know that voice. Where, where did you come from? What is this, anyhow? Hold up there! Oh, 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 what's this? A hold up? Something like that. Let me see that paper you had Bob Reed signed. See here, that ain't no business of yours. Let me see it. Show it to him, Dan. He's got a mask on and them guns look tolerable big. Quickly. Here it is. It ain't nothing but an agreement, that's all. Just an agreement of two business partners. Strike a match, Slim. I can't read in the dark. <laughs> you know me. What Quick, you... the light. Here you are, stranger. Thanks. Now, let me see. Mister, there ain't nothing there that ain't regular and according to law in that paper. No, I see that there isn't. But be careful, Dan. Yeah, here's your paper. Come on, Silver. He's a robber. He wore a mask. I'm going to plug him. Hey, I'll oh, show him. You missed him. I'm Silver. Away! Well, a lone ranger rode off into the night. 
I suppose you're wondering why he wanted to look at that paper that was signed by Bob, huh? Yeah, Pete. What was there to it? And we'll get back to that later. But after Dan saw the masked man right away, he left Slim and Wendy and got back to his own shack as quick as he could. He noted that for the next few days, Tonto kept looking at him, watching every move he made. And it began to get on Dan Slade's nerves. Finally, he got plumb fed up with the way Tonto watched him. What are you looking at me that way for? Tonto didn't make any reply for a minute. Just kept staring out of them deep, dark eyes of his. Blast you! Can't you answer me? I ask you a question. What are you watching me for? Tom to know what you think. What do you mean you know what I think? You think murder. What, sir? You make murder plans. Why, you can't... Tom, maybe Tonto walk. Then him leave here. Leave me after the way I fixed you up, eh? Not by a darn sight. You ain't gonna leave me till you repaid me for all the time and bother I went to to fix that busted ankle of yours. You drink too much fire water. That ain't none of your business. I'm a rich man now. I don't need to listen to no talk like that. Especially not from an ornery redskin. Stop staring at me, do you hear? I tell you to stop staring at me. That'll learn you. Next time I catch you staring at me like you've been doing, I'll sling red. It was getting on Dan Slade's nerves the way Tano kept close watch of him. Tano was still hobbling around with some crutches he'd made. Couldn't travel fast or far. Just managed to hobble about the shack a little bit, but it was enough for what Dan Slade had in mind. Reckon tomorrow's the day for carrying out my plans. I'll just see that Bob's laid up at home. He was thinking, making plans all night long. He went over them again and again. I can let a beam fall on his head in the morning. That'll do it. Good heavy beam hit him on the head. Tonight, as soon as the Redskins asleep, I'll borrow his crutches and fix things up. Well, that only coyote, Dan Slade, slipped down the moccasins that belonged to Tonto, who seemed to be sound asleep in the corner. Then he left the house, taking with him the crutches that Tonto had been using. He made sure to walk through plenty of mud to Bob Reed's house. There he fixed a few things, then crept back to his own shack with his murder plans all fixed. The next afternoon, Dan came into the cafe. There was quite a bunch of fellas gathered there. Well, there he is. Old Dan himself. Oh, you sleep. Howdy. Howdy, Wendy. Hello there, stranger. <laughs> I need a drink. Good stiff one. Kind of worried. Worried? Why, what's wrong, Dan? It's about Bob. He had a bad break this morning. No. Yep, a rafter in the mine fell on his head. Knocked him clean out. I lugged him home. Was he badly hurt? Oh, not so bad. Sally will fix him up. But it ain't that that bothers me. It's that ungrateful engine. Tonto? Uh -huh. What's ailing him? Well, Slim, I ain't give it much thought. But you know the day that the redskin got hurt, Bob was for shooting him. Same as you do a horse with a busted leg. If I hadn't had my way, he'd have shot him right then. Gosh, that was bad. The Indians don't forget things like that. I know it. I'm kind of feared that when Tano gets to walk without his crutches, he may try and get revenge on Bob. Is that so, Dan? Yep, and I don't like the look in that critter's eyes. What will he do to Bob? I don't know. He might try to scalp him and his family. He might set the house on fire or blow it up. Blow it up? Yep. He might swipe some blasting powder and fuse from my own supply to home and then set it under Bob's house. Suffering sage, brother. He stole my horse. Shoot down, somebody. Get him. Wait, I'll go after him. I'll take your horse, Lynn. Go right ahead, stranger. I ain't even gonna chase a drunken engine with a six gun. I'm sorry, Captain. I know that engine was bad. How'd he get my horse? There ain't no more horses here. Well, just let that fella go after him. We ain't got nothing to worry about. Take no skin off our nose. I reckon I'd better get over and see if Bob's all right, eh? Sure. I'll go with you, Dan. You see, boys, the Lone Ranger had already talked to Tonto and made plans to trap Dan Slade. Tonto carried out his part of the plans in first-rate style, acting like he was licking up and riding away while the Lone Ranger disguised as a stranger was around the town. When the Lone Ranger rode away on Slim's horse, he overtook Tonto. Oh, oh, boy, oh, 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 oh. Good work, Tonto. Quickly now. Tell me where you put the mask. Over. Over here. Under. Rock. But where's my own horse? Where's Silver? You call him. Here, Silver. Here, boy. You go fast now. Candle all fixed. What time will the candle burn down far enough to reach the fuse? Four o'clock. Four o'clock, eh? It's almost four now. Slade's going to pin this murder on you. That right. Made the track with your crutches, didn't he? That right. Him leave talk the night. Here. Candle. Ready there, Silver. You wait here, Tando. I'll be back. All ready, Silver. Hello, Silver. Away. 
while the Lone Ranger, riding his own horse and with his face mask, headed back toward Bob's home, Dan and Slim headed for the same place. Dan figured on walking slow enough so they'd see the explosion from a short distance. Well, I reckon Bob's all right, Slim. Don't see no signs of trouble around the house from here. That engine was just plumb roco, that's all, Dan. See, hold on. This here looks like clutch tracks from your shack to Bob's. Eh? Huh? Look on the ground. My gosh, it does, don't it? I wonder if that low-down redskin's been over there. What time is it, Slim? About four o'clock, I reckon. Why? I was just wondering, that's all. I wish that fella would come back with my horse. I'll bet he stole it, that's what. You wouldn't be surprised. Hey, Slim, look. What's that in the ground next to Bob's place? Smoke. And, and it's moving along the ground. Look, it's a fuse, that's what. I bet it's a fuse. That ninja must have swiped some of my blasting powder just like I was afraid he would. Get back! Back! But Bob will be killed, so his whole family. Get back, I say. You can't do nothing anyway. It's too late. Who's that? Look at that white horse come. Gosh, how he can travel. Slim, it's that fellow that held us up the other night. The masked fellow. The lone ranger. He's shooting at us. No, he ain't. Look, he shot that fuse. Cut it with a bullet and him riding full speed. Boy, he... Hold, oh, hold, oh, hold, oh, 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 oh. The next shot could be for you, Dan Slade. You don't want to stand right where you are. Don't you, don't. You set that fuse to blow your partner into eternity. Dan, you done that? No, no, it's you. thought no one saw you last night when you took the crutches, made tracks that would pin this murder on the Indian. Slim, if you want proof that Slade's the man who planned to murder Bob Reed... I'll turn you, Dan Slade. You look, you'll easily make him right now. No, no, don't listen to the best fellow. I tell you, I didn't. But I think you did. I knew it all the time there was some reason why you kept that engine. You were just planning to make him the goat. To make him take the blame for what you did. No, no, Slim, listen to me. I can explain everything. You can't explain nothing to me, Slade. No, I see it all as plain as day. And that's why I had Bob sign that paper, too. Slim, if you need further proof... I don't. You can't prove it with me. Dan Slade, you were seen last night. What? Put your guns away, Mr. Mass Man. There's something that's got to be done for this community, but I aims to be the one to do it. No, no, Slim. Don't draw your gun. Don't shoot me, Slim. Well, don't. you yellow-livered polecat. I wouldn't waste good bullets on you. I figured it was a lie when you said Bob wanted to shoot the engine. In fact, I knowed it was a lie. Then I thought it was blame funny you'd keep powder in your shack so you can start hiking for the sheriff's office. What's Get what's on? I reckon I know who it was that seen you last night. Hey, Silver! Come on! A lone ranger! <laughs> Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.